Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Changing the name of the Wiener Mobile no. to Frank Mobile. Ironically, <laughs> Frank is what I call my Wiener. You are listening to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. This is your co-host Joel All Beef Cheeseman, and this is Chad. Did Dwight from The Office just become CEO? So wash. <laughs> and on this week's show, career builder Burns. Who'd you rather? <laughs> bidding Twitter against Google and. Karen AI. Buckle up. Let's do this. Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. So, Chad, yeah. the new dynamic, you're in, you're in happy hour in Europe. Yeah. And uh, I'm at lunchtime in America. <laughs> I'm not sure how that's going to go. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> new beer. Local. Local. Sene- Seneca, what does that say? Senesha? Senescal. Senescal. Senes- Senescal. Yes, Senescal. Okay, Cardinal yep. Ale. Cardinal Ale, religiously multi ruby ale. So, um, yeah. So monks, monks are making it at the... Uh... <laughs> The uh, the Templar Knights. The temple actually, down the, yeah. <laughs> no, literally, the Templar Knights, one of their last strongholds is really close to here. And this is where they brew the beer. Okay. I should you not. Because when you're dying in the Middle Ages, it helps to be drunk. Well, you it sure. always helps to be drunk. <laughs> 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 Especially podcasting. So drink on, Chad. <laughs> drink on. Drink on. Well, I'm glad things are... Things are going well. Things are going Shout well. Shout out to some. Shout out. Let's do it. All right. I got to go first. So I'm in America. You're in Europe. I'm going to mm-hmm. see stuff on TV that you're not going to see or you're going to see. Thank God. Hand. So, Thank so, God. <laughs> so this week, CNBC uh, had a big interview with uh, your boy, Elon Musk. Oh, Jesus. And uh, he opined about work from home. And he framed it as a moral issue, which I found uh, really interesting. So I'm going to play this soundbite for you and our listeners, and we'll talk about it. I'm a big believer okay. that, 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 that people need to are more productive when they're in person. Look, there are some exceptions, but I, I kind of think that, that the whole notion of work from home is, is a bit like the, you know, the, 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 the fake Marie Antoinette quote, let them eat cake. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's, like, it's like, really, you're going to work from home, and you're going to make everyone else who made your car come work to the fact work in the factory? You're going to make the people who make your food that gets delivered that they, they can't work from home. The you know, the the, the people that, that come fix your house they, they can't work from home, but you can. Does that seem morally right? That's messed up. You see it as a moral issue. Yes. I mean, I see it more as and just it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a productivity issue, but yeah. it's also a moral issue. People should get off the goddamn uh, moral high horse with the work from home bullshit. Um, because they're asking everyone else to not work from home while they do. The, the laptop class is living in La La Land. Hello. The Hello. Top class is living in La La Land. What do you think about okay. that, Chad? 
Uh, I, well, I think it's pretty simple. I mean, this is what the this is what the rich guys have always done. They've pit the middle class against the lower class, right? Against the low wage class. They've always done that. So it's like, don't look at us and the million slash billions that we're making in super yachts and all that other bullshit, right? Now I know Elon likes to say that you know he he sleeps in his office and that kind of shit. That's just because he's a weird fucking nutso job, right? At the end of the day. What this is, is what he'd said right out of the gate. It's a belief, right? It's a belief in his fucked up head. At the end of the day, he's pitting one class against the other, and then he sits back with the popcorn and, and he watches. And, and that's, what, that's what rich dudes with a lot of money who can get on big TV can do, right? Either buy ads and or just get on, get on these, uh, these interviews. Yeah. So to me, we've seen this evolve. Uh, at first, it was a culture issue it was well if we're not in the office <laughs> we're not you know hanging out at the water cooler talking yeah. about you know seinfeld or whatever and then it became a productivity raw, raw. issue yeah and well if like we i think last week we talked about the new productivity report and productivity's down as people are working from home and now it's a moral issue which i find really like if that's a if that's not a reach, I don't know what is. But if we're yeah. like it's a moral issue, yeah. And he also said a few things that that stuck out to me in the interview. One is that uh, I think he said three point six million applications came in to Twitter uh, or Tesla. Sorry, Tesla last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you have three million uh, applications, and he also said it's harder to get into it's harder to get into Tesla than it is to Harvard was one of the things that he said. And when you have the mentality that you're more exclusive than Harvard, yeah, then yes, you better come back to the office because I've got 3 million other people that are willing to do the job and come in the office. So oh, yeah. his, his luxury is not everyone's luxury for sure. Uh, yeah. So that he's in sort of a bubble from that end. The other thing that he said was uh, that he and Larry Page, one of the, the founders of Google, uh, hang out quite a bit. And I'm sure that he and all the gang at Silicon Valley hang out. Oh, sure. Have, have cigars and the and, yacht club and bourbon or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sure what they talk about is it's costing us a lot of money in rent and real estate and whatever else. How do we get these fuckers back on the office? And they sit around and go, let's paint it as a moral issue. Maybe that'll work. And this is the latest uh, latest thing. So I don't know. Moral issue yeah. is a real reach from my perspective. These are all, and again, one of the reasons why I love this podcast is we get a chance to actually break down the bullshit. Just these narratives, productivity, we broke that down last week. It's yeah. not fucking productivity, guys. It's it's the bullshit situation that you actually make people work in every fucking day. In this case, again, he's just pitting lower class with upper or with middle class so that they can sit back and and watch those two fight it out. Uh, yeah, the last thing I want to do is listen to a, the, the richest man in the world tell me how we should actually fucking work. I mean, yeah. it's it, it, it's well beyond him at this point. Yeah. Not to mention, I mean, he's the guy who actually went into Twitter and had his all of his engineering staff re-engineer his account so that he would actually be more popular than some of the other influencers that are out there, right? So, I mean, this is where the guy's head is. It's all about him. It has nothing to do with anybody else. Mm -hmm. It's all about him. If you want to worship Elon, great, you should. And you should work at Tesla. <laughs> and for 3.6 million people, that's exactly what they want to do. That's there you exactly go. One they, well, do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch it up. I'm going to give a shout out to a startup, Adsy. Uh, and I'm... I'm, I'm going to shout out to Adsy because the organization, you, we literally just did a shred on them, right? Yep. And they were part of a laundry list of organizations that were in it. But Vlad, the founder and CEO over at Adsy, who's in Kiev, by the way, uh -huh. it, it, first and foremost, if somebody talks about you, amplify it. Fuck, get it out there. Amplify it, number one. Uh, no matter whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, you can actually turn a negative into a positive or at least a first you know a, a perceived negative into a positive and we see this from so many companies when we do buy or sells or we have opinions during our podcasts or what have you where some companies the smart ones they want to help control the narrative mm -hmm. they reach out to mm -hmm. us and they say let's talk through what you're saying 
we want to know more about what you're talking about and or try to educate you on what we're trying to do in the market. To me, that's trying to control the narrative, trying to be smart. We have big companies who have gotten unicorn cash who mm -hmm. we talk about never reached out to us at all. Now, some have, don't get me wrong, yep. but to me, it's a huge brand fail for an organization not to amplify what's being said about them one way or the other. In this case, a little bitty company out of Ukraine called AdSea was uh -huh. like, holy shit, let's amplify. So <laughs> big shout out to them. Yeah. And by the way, what happens when that happens is Chad and I share it, we like it, and then you get to access our tens of thousands of followers on LinkedIn. So yeah. in addition to good practice, it's pretty good marketing strategy. As of this recording, ADC, that's A-D-S-E-E, -E, has 14 uh, followers on LinkedIn. Let's see Ratchet if we can that get up. that up a little bit, uh, <laughs> if nothing else, just because of what they did. That. They went, just they the went deep, Chad. <laughs> they went deep on that marketing. Uh, my second shout out and my last one is uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, Chad, if you've noticed a dip in your LinkedIn follower count, this would be why. LinkedIn will no longer count inactive or restricted accounts in connection and follower stats. So if you've really? seen your number dip, that's why. I, I frankly haven't seen much, so that's a good news. Uh, being in recruiting, everyone that I'm with, I'm connected to is probably on LinkedIn all yeah. the time. So yeah. I didn't see a dip. But if you have, that's why. No dip here, kids. A uh, shout out to Lore uh, Porter. You might remember her because she's the director of all things cool at uh, Penn Entertainment. She was on stage with us in California during Isom's Inspire. Now, Lore went above and beyond. She actually took the panoramic view of us on stage and she made that her LinkedIn background. And, and I just have to say, I saw it, I laughed my ass off and I loved it. Thanks, Loray. And I can't wait till we see you again because you bring the best beer. That's right. And if you don't know Pin Entertainment, they do gaming, Chad. And if you're not playing the game at Chad and Cheese, which is free shit, Oh, well, you yes. are a loser, my friend. You are a loser <laughs> because we're giving away, get this, Chad, free T-shirts from our friends at JobGet, oh. free bourbon from our homeboys and girls at Text Kernel, free beer from Aspen Tech, Tech Labs, and this mm. month's winner for free beer is Brittany Kaiser. Brittany Kaiser lives in Michigan, but she's a state fan. She's not a Wolverine fan. That was important. <laughs> Uh, but not necessary to win to win stuff from us. And uh, if it's your birthday, you can win uh, rum from our friends at Plum. And this month's winner goes to Sean Campbell. Again, Ooh. if you want free shit, if you want to be a winner, you can go to Penn Entertainment, but you can also go to chatcheese.com, click the free link, and sign up. Yep. You miss every shot you don't take, kids. Events. Guess what? We are getting ready to travel. Oh, that's right. I've got some travel already happening, uh, but we're going to be at Wreckfest in Network Park. That, that's right. Courtesy of Shaker Recruitment Marketing and the lovely kids over at uh, Wreckfest, we're going to be emceeing the Disrupt Stage, and that's going to happen early July. If you are in the UK, hell, if you're in Europe, for God's sakes, and you've never been to Wreckfest, take your whole crew. That's all there is to it. Not to mention, if you're in the U.S., guess what, kids? We're going to have Wreckfest in the U.S. in Nashville. And Joel and I, we, we, we were two douchebags on a yacht. We're going to try to do the two dudes on a pontoon. Again, podcast of the people. Uh, but that's in September. So you have time in the U.S. Go to chadcheese.com. Click on events in the upper right-hand corner. And the whole hero image says Wreckfest. Click on the button. Register your whole fucking team, man. This is an all hands meeting. Learn, drink, enjoy, and come to Wreckfest. And by the way, Chad, I think uh, I think at Nebworth, yeah. there's going to be a leaving sighting. <laughs> oh, leaving our yes. European man on the street is going to be there and joining us. Uh, we're going to drag him on stage at some point. I cannot wait. Yeah, but that'll be a ton of fun. And as you're in <laughs> Portugal, I will be in Vegas in June. Uh, with the, the gang at the Aaron app, that's E-R-I-N. And uh, in honor of you not being there, 
they've actually purchased some cardboard cutouts of you, like three, <laughs> three big Chad heads. And then one, I think full body, uh, Chad, that'll be in the booth with me, uh, recording. So that'll, that'll be a lot of fun. And that's in Vegas in June. Well, it's it's me. It, it's me and my plush bathrobe when we were in Sweden, because we mm-hmm. actually walked to the Kattegat because we're going to jump in and swim with your ancestors. Oh, we and, did. uh, we, 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 we had it on and we had the beer and we, we had it all. So yeah, no, that's, that's, that, that's a, that's a great pick. Oh, thinking about you in a bathroom, <laughs> really? Can you feel the tension in the air right now? I know I can. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. That's right. Let's talk about birthdays this week. Celebrating another trip around the sun, we've got Michelle Sargent, Matthew Brigham, Calm O'Cunan. Tell me your Irish without telling me your Irish. Uh, Jacqueline Adair, Jeanette Leeds, Matt Soroka, Sean Campbell, Madison Richards, Stephanie Trisick, Caitlin Fail, Sarah Grossman, Bill Kudick, and the doctor, not Jay, not Detroit, <laughs> not Strange, the job board job doctor, board. all celebrate trip around the sun. Another trip around the sun. And don't forget, kids, the Chad and Cheese are now on video. That's right, video. Uh, you can go to YouTube or you can go to chadcheese.com. You can click on the YouTube logo. Uh, on the header or go to video in the uh, in the header too and uh, you go to YouTube subscribe check us out you can listen to us you can watch us all that fun stuff all Where right this video is all right us. all yes. right but we so, are we are <laughs> All right, let's peel the onion. Okay, Career Builder has reached an agreement to sell its international business to a recruitment marketplace in Greece called Carrera. The deal includes Career Builder sites in the UK, France, Germany, Sweden, Vietnam, and India. Meanwhile, Career Builder has reportedly laid off a significant number of employees with sources estimating up to 60% of its workforce in the US. The company has appointed Jeff Furman as the new CEO replacing Susan Arthur. All this to focus on growth in the US where CareerBuilder is still one of the top five job sites. Chad, lots to unpack here. Let's start with the international angle. Yep. So this is a real Mo Green godfather moment here. You don't buy me out, I buy you out. So CareerBuilder bought Carrera.gr in 2007, but sold it back in 2020, right? So that they bought it and then sold it back. They probably sold it for- Doesn't anyone notice this? Uh, I feel like I'm group. taking crazy pills. <laughs> I mean, they did the same thing with Text Colonel. Uh, Carrera Group will have 300 plus employees in 10 different cities. Uh, the crew builder sites acquired are in the UK, France, Germany, Sweden, Vietnam, and India via similar web. There is only one of those, Vietnam, that is in the top five. So there's a lot of work for the group to have, and and hopefully got they got this uh, on sale. They they got all these. Europe has a bunch of countries in it. Um, gee, how how often do we talk about Greece in the uh, the game of of world employment technology? Not very often. So here's here's our introduction, folks. uh, Greece. Um, I'm guessing a, a, a TJ Maxx in Milan uh, had career builder <laughs> on the rack. I don't know um, what to make of this. I mean, offices, employees, this feels like an aqua hire. It feels like a total uh, fire sale from career builder standpoint. I mean, why they, whatever. I, it, are we going to be talking about this on the European show? I wouldn't hold your breath. We'll see what yeah. happens, but I, yeah. I don't see uh, this new company uh, that's putting a stake in the ground in all these countries making a big impact. I don't see Stepstone shaking in their boots uh, anytime soon. So no. I don't have a ton of ton of commentary on the inter- international piece other than thirty like, million dollars. Thirty million dollars going into Greece. I mean, that, that's yeah. that's not a bad thing. I think they're definitely going to try to spin. Uh, 
what Career Builder was. Most of these sites were Career Builder branded sites. There's only mm-hmm. one, I think, maybe one or two, um, jobs.de, which is one hell of a, uh, a domain to have, uh, was, uh, was the German site. Do they kick out the Career Builder ad or do you think they become a uh, house of brands? Yeah, I don't think that you can in Europe. I mean, we've talked to Levin about that. I mean, you have to you have to stay with a brand that is something that uh, the the community and the country aligns with. And I think that was one of the reasons that Monster had problems. That indeed has had problems. It slowly ticked up in some of the countries. Uh, but I think I would say it's some of the reasons why Career Builder is having problems. Uh, you remember, and you still see it. When you go to a restaurant and you see a sign that says under new management, Mm -hmm. I think they should in every single one of these sites put under new management and and then actually put we're Europeans on it. And they need to go back to the old career builder branding. And if there's a God in heaven, they'll bring back the monkey commercials. (laughs) This time with CGI because you get canceled with real monkeys in ads these days. So they'll have to be CGI. But I don't know that they have that kind of budget. Bring the the monkey. (laughs) That's right. That's right. The CGI. Let's use some puppets or some shit. I don't know. Um, So the question is U.S. What the fuck with the U.S.? U.S. uh, (laughs) Still a top five site. Uh, yeah. Still on, still on autopilot. Um, yes. Most of their shit is email still, still like the number of email addresses they have and like register to use the site. Yeah. I mean, they're still pumping out tons of emails to, to unsuspecting uh, job seekers. <laughs> it's a cash cow. They can eliminate most of the employees. Now, what I've heard is everywhere, everywhere from 20% to 60% of staff. Right. I think 60 makes a lot more sense based on what's going on uh, with, yes. with what's what's what history and what we think the yeah. future is on this. So uh, you've got better insight on this and I'm not going to steal your thunder because we talked about it in the green room. Uh, but other than the U S is about it. Uh, we're, we're both pretty sure Broadbean is going to be off the table uh, very soon, if not already. Yeah. Uh, we'll, more insight on that as we know more or get approval to talk about that. But you have more insight on what's going to happen in the U.S., and I don't want to steal your thunder, so you go ahead and, and give your opinion and insights. Yeah, I think right out of the gate, I mean, top five. I mean, from from my sources, Career Builder is making over a million dollars a month in arbitrage alone. Arbitrage alone. You can effectively run the operation on a skeleton crew just for arbitrage, depending on the amount of tech debt you're facing. Hell, You could switch to a job board in a box at that point. You can kill the tech debt and still get the cash handsomely, right? So we'll talk more in depth about the CEO change in a minute, but I I don't think you bring in a guy like Jeff Furman to finish off a Career Builder USA deal or a Broadbean deal. I believe they're they're both already done. And that's one of the reasons why Sue Arthur walked out the door. There's no way in hell you let Dwight Schrute do this. I mean, that's all there is to it, right? So to me, and again, this is mostly opinion and vibes that I'm getting from my sources and and from uh, the industry itself. There's a shitload of cash that's there. Yeah, There is an asset. It it could be almost on autopilot to some some extent. Uh, I think both those deals are done and there's nothing but turning the lights off, kids. So if it was an acquisition target, any guesses on who might come in and uh, pick up the yard sale rubbish? Yeah, that's a good that's a good question because this is like this is core career builder, right? This is this everything was built around this. Mm-hmm. So the question is, does Apollo have fatigue after this? And I don't think that they would because they th- this is what they do. They carve up companies and they sell that shit. So I think they're they're going to get a good price out of it. Who would buy it? To be quite frank, if in, Indeed could smash it or they could buy it, mm-hmm. right? I think that's smart. Uh, anything, anything beyond that, I mean, it's it's up in the air to me. Yeah. I mean, I because all you're doing, if you take a look at some of their acquisitions they've had over the years, some of the big ones, Career Mosaic, we know that name, right? Because we've been in the industry for a while. Yeah. Career Path. You go to those domains today, they don't go anywhere. Headhunter.net. They don't go anywhere. They don't resolve. 
Yeah. It's like, oh my God. So there are all these domains and whatnot that they're not even doing anything with. I don't even know if they understand the value of those assets yeah. or even that there is a value anymore. Yeah. I mean, from my perspective, Indeed would be interesting. I think Indeed has enough problems uh, going right now to deal with that. If I were, and we talk a lot about companies in Europe coming to America, like a job and talent could come in mm -hmm. uh, and buy this thing up and have instant brand, instant user base. Stepstone. Stepstone. Yeah. If, if you're if you're looking to come to the U.S., Career Builder seems like a really nice uh, door to uh, to the market with customers, with users, what, right. regardless of what you do with the brand after time, uh, no big deal. But if you can get a foothold through Career Builder, um, that seems like a pretty good strategy to me. And, and you're not you're not buying the tech. You're buying nope. the lists. You're buying the portfolio because the tech, from my understanding, again, is shit. Yep. 20 yep. years old, 20 years old, it's shit. And they've juiced everything out of the, that tech they possibly can. So it's got to be an operator who already has tech in place. Yep. Uh, and, and, and there you go. Yep. Slap their logo on your brand and, and you're done. And move yes. over all their data and customers and... You're good to go. So you, you yep. mentioned your commentary on the CEO. Yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and mention uh, Sue Arthur, who came in in 2021. She barely had enough time to put her stapler on the desk uh, before <laughs> this shit went down. And yeah, you're right about uh, Jeff Furman. I mean, his LinkedIn profile, uh, if you had white bread on a profile picture, like that would be <laughs> Jeff Furman. <laughs> like. He was VP of facilities in real estate uh, yes. before this position. Um, doesn't really inspire a vision for the future. Uh, no. no. <laughs> at any rate. So uh, more of the same with, uh, you know, managing the, uh, he's in the cockpit. Who's driving really? And, and this thing's on autopilot, whatever. I hope, I, Jeff, I hope you have a good parachute to jump out of when this, when this thing goes down. But yeah. Uh, they, it's like they picked one of the few guys left and said, you want to be CEO? I'm like, sure. I'll add that to my, my resume and Jeff Furman, congratulations. Yeah. As soon as I heard this, I, I automatically thought of Dwight from the office. It's like, who do you hand the keys to? Cause who's going to be the only one left standing? It's going to mm -hmm. be that fucker. Right. Uh, yeah. So seriously today, May 19th, 2023, Jeff Furman, their C is their CEO going a little bit deeper into the LinkedIn highlights, he was the director of real estate, real estate at Johnson controls, the chief procurement officer and head of global real estate at Amex. Uh, responsibilities were for all global real estate operations, including transaction, uh, project and facility management, as well as strategic planning and lease administration across across a global portfolio. Jeff was hired at Career Builder five years ago for this specific reason, to sweep up, turn off the lights, and lock the doors because everybody's gone. If Jeff's profile page was a soundbite. <laughs> so layoffs real quick. Are you in the 20% camp, the 60% camp? Uh, oh, where are you? Definitely more toward the 60%. Yeah. I mean, at this point, they're trying to lean out. Uh, Broad being career builder, I personally think they're off the table. I, I think they're done deals already. So those those individuals will, obviously, those are those are or, individuals that will go with those organizations. So, uh, yeah, I think I think it's closer to 60. Uh, yeah. one, way, one way or the other. I mean, it doesn't matter. This is a plane that's going down, and Jeff Furman was, was hired to be the kamikaze pilot to put this baby in the air. And that is our career builder block. And after that, we need a quick break. But when we get back, yeah. we'll talk about Twitter and Google.
All right, Chad, let's play a little Who'd You Rather <laughs> with some heavyweights, Twitter and Google. These aren't two startups in HR tech. These are these are big companies. So two of them <laughs> made news this week. Two have pretty big aspirations. We're going to break it down and, and, and give who we'd rather pick in this decision. So number one, we have Twitter. Twitter has reportedly made its first acquisition under your boy Elon Musk's <laughs> leadership, purchasing a fellow San Fran-based job-matching tech startup called Lasky. Reports say the acquisition aligns with Musk's vision of transforming Twitter into a multifunctional super app. The exact acquisition price is not disclosed, but Lasky had raised $6 million. According to Crunchbase, founded in 2021, they employed 26 people. Now to Google. Gloves are off. Right. Google announced new conversational features for its search engine and made its barred chatbot accessible to English speakers. Google's updated search engine uses AI to provide detailed summary responses and allows users to ask follow-up questions in a chatbot-like manner. Google also announced upcoming enhancements to BARD, including image responses using Google Lens image search and integration with partner applications like Adobe, Kayak, OpenTable, ZipRecruiter, Indeed, and the Khan Academy. Chad, who'd you rather, Twitter's super app or Google's search enhancements? This is the worst superhero I think I've ever seen. It kind of reminds me of like the, the Facebook for jobs thing that happened. Uh, Twitter with jobs, Elon is all over the board. No focus, wants to be an influencer. Uh, Twitter is nothing but a hobby for him. But on the other hand, Google with generative AI search, this is about survival for Google. Last week, you mentioned Google seeing open AI as, uh, you know, really a huge threat to search, right? Uh, and to their model, to their to their advertising model, OpenAI has created a, subsi a subscription-based model where Google search entirely predicated on advertising. Instead of just packing up the search tent and putting everything into BARD, which they could have done, uh, which more than likely would have been and will be subscription-based, Google was forced to evolve the search experience by folding in generative AI, which will allow for text and voice interaction, not to mention, as you said, image, right? But the result sets will be served up in a new generative AI model instead of the old-timey search algorithm that we've known since the, you know, like the, the 2000s. This will allow for a new and better experience with the ability to keep advertising and then start charging subscription, AKA freemium models, mm -hmm. which are big again, uh, through BARD. It's the best of both worlds and evolves more than just the UI of Go uh, the Google search product. This is what Google needed to get away from the good old algorithm they've been tweaking for 20 plus years. So you'd rather Google. What are you a doing, step bro? <laughs> All right. Twitter. Okay. Super cool and interesting that they bought a company in our space. Did not see that coming. But it's really weird. Uh, they basically <laughs> shut they basically shut it down. Um, usually when somebody buys a company, like the company's website is still up. Um, there's a big thing on the header like, hey, acquired by so-and-so, and then click here for the press release. Like, you go to you go to Lasky.com today, and it's like, eh, we're not working anymore. <laughs> we're just done. There's nothing there. So it's like, why the hell would you buy this thing? Uh, $6 million isn't a lot of investment. I mean, San Fran-based. For all I know, uh, Elon hated the founder and wanted to buy him and shut him down. Uh, for all I know, he wants to hire everyone that's working there and make them Tesla employees or Twitter employees. Maybe he wants access to the database of tech workers uh, to come work for his company, and he wants to just give them to his recruiter base as a, a an ego or quick way to get resumes. But if he's getting 3 million resumes a year, I mean, does he really need more profiles and resume? It's just really fucking weird. I wish I had an insightful <laughs> comment about what the hell Twitter is doing buying Lasky. 
Yeah. Which we never talked about on the show, by the way. No. Uh, so I, I got nothing, man. Usually I have something to say. I don't know what the hell Elon is doing. Uh, the super app thing, you know, could I see – can I see Twitter having profiles like LinkedIn where they're more professional, maybe some basic professional information or, mm-hmm. or degrees or credentials? Like, yeah. Is this that? I don't think so. Maybe. I don't, it, I don't know. Like payments are going to come in. He talked about Tesla automated driving. So that could be done through Twitter maybe. I don't know. It's just really weird. Now, Google. Who, who trusts Elon with their credit card information? Google. I mean, Google, like... All right, all right, all right. Okay. Fucking sexy. The, the gloves are off at Google. Somebody at Google said, you know what? We've been scared to launch this shit. We've been, like, thinking about humanity and our survival. Fuck it. We're dropping the bomb on everything. So, um, Bard is impressive. I mean, it's still not... What's cool about Bard is... OpenAI is uh, 2021 was the last time that they source content unless you feed stuff into it. It's, it's old. BARD is like real time. You can ask a news question and it knows like in real time almost. It can come in and, and tell you what's going on in the news, which is yeah. exceptional. Google is leveraging everything they have in their arsenal, which OpenAI does not have. They got to build Skip. that shit up. Google's like, we got a whole mansion of shit. We're going to dump it in and like fuck shit up this is step brothers walking into the interview we're here to fuck shit up that's what google did uh with this demo now what's interesting <laughs> to me as well is i'm always curious about who are they going to kill in our industry like who's in trouble the first obvious one the text the O's, the job description things i think anyone that helps you write a resume is probably fucked uh through what's going on now i was searching on Bard, was it? What is it like to work at? Name a company. It was able to tell me, Glassdoor style, Indeed review style, news and the whatever style, what it's like to work there. The good, the bad, the ugly. Like, there's real potential to like fuck Glassdoor, and Indeed reviews and blind and whoever's doing reviews is fucked. Because I can go in and find out what it's like to work at any company. Yeah. I don't have to go to your site, which may no. or may not be true. And like what's what's seeded, what's fake. You know, I mean, I think that's a real issue with these sites. Mm-hmm. Google Bard will do it. It'll tell you what it's like to work at a company. And to me, that's a real threat to the review sites. That's one of my, my main insights. So, yeah, I don't know what the fuck is going on uh, at Twitter. It's fun to watch, and I'll continue to do so. But what Google's doing um, – is as a user cool shit as an industry like shake up uh, a lot of people are going to be scared about this uh, google for sure is who i'm who i'm picking uh, in this debate and as soon as they get their head out of their ass with regard to job feeds and they just go over to google for jobs because all that content's already ma- marked up I, new fucking game big boy new fucking game yeah if and when you can say, find the perfect job for me, and it can just give you shit, like, that's, anyway. That 60% of the here. time, it works every time. All right, let's talk about uh, some, some company getting some bucks. Uh, Indianapolis-based Qualify has secured $4.5 million in funding to support its growth and development. This brings total funding to $7.7 million. Qualify, qualify plans to use the funding to enhance its hiring platform, establish industry partnerships, and address recruitment challenges. The company aims to streamline the hiring process and provide a memorable candidate experience through automation and asynchronous phone interviews. Chad, your take on the news from our Hoosier brothers and sisters. Yeah, so Darian was on Firing Squad about a year ago, and I believe we both gave him a So there's there's one thing I look at uh, as a priority and align most of my weight behind whether I'm looking at a yes or no decision when I'm assessing a startup. It's not the domain name. It's not the colors. It's not the brand. It's not the tech. What matters is the founder, the CEO, the visionary, the voice box. And I think Darian is a winner. He's personable. He's humble, moldable. uh, But most of all, 
you can see the sparkle in the guy's eyes. I mean, the, the, the vision is clean. The, the platform is clean. And that's the reason they oversubscribed. I also think it's smart that much like Adam Gordon did with crowdfunding, you set the bar low and then you blow it out of the fucking water. So, I mean, in summary for me, I don't like the koala. It doesn't matter. I don't like the colors. It doesn't matter. I really don't like that they don't have pricing on the pricing <laughs> teeth when I say this, but it doesn't matter. But what does matter is that I like the tech, the vision, and most of all, Darian is a fucking winner. And he's he's in a space that is very crowded, yeah. very crowded, but I think they do have the guy at the head of the table, the vision, and everything necessary to make this win. Yeah, yeah, we're we're a little biased. Uh, we've known Darian for a while. Just a just a solid guy. Uh, just someone you want to hang out with. Uh, which, which I think we only had lot. beers with him once, though, right? So I mean, you know, we've seen him several well, he's times. He's been at shows. We... He's been at conferences. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean he's, he's around. Everybody uh, has. But uh, just just I want to say a sweet kid, but he that's maybe a little. He's just a sweetheart. Uh, so yes. Indiana, we're biased. I mean, uh, he's a black founder. Uh, we're biased. Uh, we love seeing that. Um, we love seeing the organic growth, like you've mentioned. Uh, they were founded in 2019. This isn't some one-year-old company getting $10 million. They've grown organically. Um, they employ 25 or so people. Uh, most of them are Hoosiers as well. So that's, that's, uh, that's nice to see. They've just grown organically, done it right, um, and we just that's always something that, that appeals to us. Um, the, thing, the thing is, like, the whole voice interview, chat interview, texting, mm -hmm. there's, there's so many companies doing that. Um, I can't imagine the push and pull of, like, we should do this, we should do that. We need to add this because so and so just just launched and has that. Qualify has done a really good job of focusing on what they do best, uh, honing that, making it yeah. as superior as possible. And, and you and I both love the focus uh, with any startup, and these guys showcase that as well. So you know, I speak. Both of us. Great to qualify. Keep 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 it keep it going, guys. Darian, uh, yeah, we'll have to have drinks again soon. Obviously, it's gonna have to be in August. When Chad's back in the States and he's <laughs> and he's salty and miserable again, uh, we'll have to get him have to get him a drink. And it looks like you need a refill, Chad. So let's let's take a quick break and we'll talk about Karen with a C. All right, Chad. Karen Marjorie. Karen spelled C A R Y N is a 23-year-old influencer with 1.8 million followers on Snapchat. Wow. She has created an AI-powered chatbot called Karen AI, which serves as a virtual girlfriend to more than 1,000 individuals. Since we've seen this story, it's probably up to 5,000. Uh, these virtual relationships involve conversations ranging from discussing future plans to intimate and sexually charged chats. Karen AI closely mimics Marjorie's voice and personality, and people are willing to pay $1, sorry, $1, that's not plural, $1 per minute, although the minutes are probably plural, for interactions with the bot. During its private beta test on the Telegram app, Karen AI generated, you ready for this? $71,610 in revenue from its predominantly male user base. No shit. Marjorie believes that having an AI doppelganger can enhance her career as an influencer. Chad, <laughs> what you got? It's the new phone sex line. I remember you'd be watching TV at night and like, call 800 <laughs> Karen it was AI, 1900. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 1900. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but I mean, you think of it though $71,000 in a week. In a private In a week, data. kids. <laughs> in a week. So, uh, it, okay, just my mind's going to explode here. Imagine coupling this with video, synthesized video, right? Because this is already audio. OnlyFans would fucking explode with content. 
revenue and well let's let's just leave it at that it would explode um several 18 to 25 year old males heads would mm-hmm. explode as well um i listened to the the hard fork podcast uh which is uh, i think by the new york times uh from february where one of the journalists slash podcasts podcasters um went into a fatal attraction like hole with bing's chatbot named sydney for two hours this stuff he it was eerie fucking eerie because it it sounded he was reading the texts back this these were text this is we're actually talking synthesized voices Mm -hmm. more humanized sucks you in um it is fucking crazy but think of again we keep talking about these only fans uh, eight thousand a month, twelve thousand a month. What? This is seventy-one thousand in a week. And how she did no this, work. A yes, did the work. How this That's could explode? She has a portfolio of pictures. You jump into the chat bot. It's seventy-six thousand dollars or seventy-one thousand dollars in a week will be nothing compared to what OnlyFans and these influencers are. Doesn't doing. anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. By the way, no word if it's in multiple languages, which she'll also be able to do in the near future. There is a lot of money in lonely men, Chad. Wow. There's a lot of, lot of lonely men and <laughs> Horny men, that yes. That need to be uh, <laughs> Or is that redundant? Other. Horny. Uh, yeah, I yes. love the 900 <laughs> number reference. <laughs> Astrologers and, uh, and, and phone sex lines. Ooh, so that's another thing. We're having a party, big boy. You want to join the party? That was great. <laughs> so... So we've gone from a hundred dollar hookers mm-hmm. to nine dollar a month OnlyFans uh, accounts uh, to a dollar minute uh, AI women. It's become a commodity. Uh, what's next? I guess the sex robots will be a thousand bucks a piece, and they'll eventually be uh, I don't know fifty bucks at Walmart. Um, that's kind of like I, where I, this I thing would not goes. want one of those. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there a movie where somebody got a sex robot out of the out of like the trash? It was like an older model. Anyway, it's probably idiocracy, that must have been, which is where we're going. By the that way, that must have been Cinemax back yeah, in the eighties when I was Skinamax, watching that yeah. on regularly. Dude, I we're doomed as a species. We're yes. totally doomed. Uh, doomed. Once, yeah, once video comes and she'll do whatever the hell you want, and then the VR headsets and the sex robot, like we're just fucking doomed. Only. Jeff Furman can save us, Chad. <laughs> Somebody call Jeff Furman, otherwise our species is finished. Hide your kids. He's so the doors. You're That's listening to idea. HR's most dangerous <laughs> podcast. Chad Solosh and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news. Thank you for listening to what's it called? Podcast. With Chad. The cheese. Brilliant. We talk about recruiting. They talk about technology, but most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout-outs of people you don't even know, and yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses, and not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!